Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Um, my name is Elisa Sklar. I am the VP of Marketing at GIS Planning. I am delighted to welcome you to today's overview of California's new interactive community and place-based data tool. I'm here with my colleague, Jeff Sunnison, our Director of Client Services. I'm also going to introduce two members of the GoBiz team that many of you may know uh, who've been working with us on this launch. That is Michael Caravolius, the science fellow at GoBiz on the community-based solutions team, and Mark Polhemis on the place-based solution, the place-based solution specialist. There we go, I got it right. Welcome everybody. And so with that, I'm gonna pass this over to uh, Michael and Mark who are gonna talk to you uh, about um, you know, the, the kind of concept behind this tool and some of the things they'd like to share with you as members of the Cal state of California communities. Great, thank you, Elisa. Good morning, everyone. I'm Mark Polhemus, GoBiz Place-Based Solution Specialist. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you this morning and to host GIS Planning to provide an overview of the community and place-based data tool. In effort to provide innovative resources and technical assistance to California economic development partners, GoBiz worked with GIS Planning to develop this user-free mapping and data tool. This tool will support California agencies and organizations with business attraction and expansion initiatives, providing you with easily accessible, and compre easily accessible comprehensive demographic and economic snapshot information. The community and place-based data tool was birthed by asking our economic development partners, what can we do to help in your local efforts? We heard repeatedly that the cost of procuring reliable current regional data for business expansion was putting a strain on local capacity. In response, GoBiz, GoBiz's science and technology fellows worked with GIS planning to develop a tool that would begin closing technical gaps for economic development organizations of all sizes. Partners at GIS planning will demonstrate for you this morning. This tool provides demographic, labor, industry, business, and expenditure data for cities, counties, and economic regions for the entire state of California. This tool can be used to craft responses to GoBiz site selection RFIs, and more broadly, it is an easy tool for you all to broadcast your local talents and economic strengths. Critical tools like this are created out of, created out of open dialogue with partners like you, and we look forward to continuing this dialogue to learn how we can implement ongoing improvements for your benefit. Now, on behalf of GoBiz, I thank you for joining us in this demonstration. Great. Thank you so much, Mark. I appreciate the introduction. And, uh, you know, as, as Mark points out here, what we're going to do now is offer you kind of an overview of the tool based on how uh, different ways <clears throat> communities like to use this data. And then I'm going to turn this over to Jeff and he'll speak a little bit more about some of the other features and functionality and then we're happy to take questions at the end. So some of the things that we'd like to share with you off the top is obviously you'll see that a direct link to the data tool is up here. I'm gonna show you another way that you'll be able to navigate to it directly uh, from the GoBiz website in a moment. Some of the things that we'll show you um, talk about the intuitive mobile responsive design. So all of our tools are mobile friendly, so you can access them from any device and your website visitors can access them from any device. You don't sacrifice any functionality when you're using mobile. So all the reports and everything are gonna be available to them. We also have created this kind of split screen map and data display so that you've got the map on one side and the data. If you, we, we our data is dynamically sorted. And that means that if you change any of the criteria, uh, automatically updates on the fly in the data reports on the left. There's a variety of different tools that'll be available to you on the maps, as you'll see, pinpoint, free draw. We have engaging uh, heat maps. You can save your reports in multiple project files, which is really important um, so that you have these kind of bookmarks. And you can do that without having to create a login. We also have a polished report design. They're really beautiful and easy to, uh, to share. And then share piece is a, a really big part of this as well because we want you to be able to share the data and analysis that you're doing in a variety of different formats depending on your needs whether this is about business development or sales uh, marketing place marketing any of those things so with that I'm going to take us over directly into the tool so this is what it looks like when you open the tool as you can see 
Um, but before I start exploring this with you, let me bring you back over to uh, the main website for GoBiz, just so that you can see. If you enter the business.ca.gov site, you can also find the tool by going over to apps and then scrolling down and you'll see it over here. So those are kind of two ways in to the tool itself. <laughs> Now, when you get to the tool, you'll see that there is this dialog box that opens and it allows you to begin if you want to by searching for a specific city, a specific county, or any of the specific custom regions that we have added in that kind of bring you directly into there. You can also minimize this and just go into searching the tool on your own if that's something that you want to do. So let's start by picking a, uh, you know, just a different place that we can start looking through and you'll be able to see, I'll just pick uh, at, um, at random somewhat, Anaheim, so that's where it's going to take us to. Now when we open any of the reports for any of the cities or counties or regions, this is the page that you're going to begin by seeing. It will have an interactive infographic over here, which captures some key snapshots about the community. Um, and you're gonna see the map on the right-hand side as well. At any point in your analysis, you can change location by clicking over here where it says change location. You can choose to switch over to any other city, county, to the state as a whole, or to any of the custom regions. And there's also, you can you know, start typing it or you can select it from the list as well. So it would be interesting then, we're just gonna use, since I have Anaheim open up over here, you can see that you can start by exploring those key data points. Now, if you are using these for any reason, if you are looking for social media posts or e-newsletter content or something to put into a proposal, these things are easy to download. If you look at the three little dots on any of the blocks over here, that means that you can download that image by clicking it. It can then download and it'll go over to um, into your computer. You can then use those images as PNGs uh, or JPEGs as you would like. Now, the, let's look at the different reports that we've got over here for you. So we'll click over to demographics. You can at any point, if you're wondering where is the data from and when was it updated, at the bottom left of all of our reports, you'll see the citation. So you can see that we get our demographics data from Applied Geographic Solutions, which is, a, and that it was last updated in 2021. Jeff, when are we scheduled for the next update on the demographic? That update is, will happen in the next month, I believe. In the next month okay so at that point you'll see 2022 down there and we we update that twice a year right you also oh, just like i can jump in real quick yeah that we updated in usually in december and in june so the june update is coming up uh the december update which is reflective of the 2021 is an adjustment for that june release date so june is when everything rolls over to the next year excellent okay thank you now the nice thing about this is an interactive visual contest. It helps you visualize data. So if you want to see how, let's say, the 20 to 29 year olds fall across the geography in an area, you can click that on the over here and you'll see a thematic heat map over here. You, it's granular, so you can actually drill down. You can go from zip code to block group. And we also have activated for people who have um, visual, uh, different kinds of visual issues or um, disabilities that people who have, let's say, color blindness, these patterns and colors are different ways to produce a theme, theme thematic heat map that people with uh, color blindness should still be able to see. I know that's becoming um, more of an issue um, in meeting um, uh, criteria for serving populations with uh, different kinds of disabilities. You can also view the data as a chart by clicking over here, going back between table and chart. And as I'm going to show you on all the different reports, is we've built in really dynamic sharing options for you. So at any point you can download as a PDF if that's something you want to do. Some of the reports can be downloaded as Excel. You can also print. And this share button is what I think of as our place marketing superpower. So whatever community you're from, you can directly share, and this is going to share this instance of analysis. So I have selected 20 to 29 year olds for Anaheim. That can be sent to someone by email. You can share directly onto social media if you want. That will open up that, so you can have a social media post that allows you to, to share that from there. Or, and I think this is actually one of the strengths of this tool, is you can grab this hyperlink. 
So you could have a link on your website, in an email newsletter, in a document, in a report, anywhere you want that will take people back to this exact instance of analysis. Now this is going to be true for all of the different reports because we really wanted to help people capture that analysis. So here again, we're going to map out how management occupations fall across the area in Anaheim. And I can this open this up if I wanted to look at specific, let's say just chief executives in the area. That's something that I can map out here as well. Um, and allows us to do that. Now the occupation data I believe is from MZ. This is one of the questions that we often get, where does that come from? So you'll know where that is. Um, establishments is another report that you have over here that allows you to, to get more information about the businesses and organizations in the area. So you have all kinds of information about how these things might fall across the area. So if you're looking for you know, food manufacturing, in the region, we can heat map by density and you'll be able to, to kind of dive in and look a little bit more closely. Um, again, you'll notice that we can always do this uh, sharing with the share button over here. Consumer expenditures is something that we see a lot of interest, especially related to retail. Um, the businesses in your area might be interested. This is data that a lot of small and medium sized businesses cannot get on their own. Obviously, putting it on this tool makes it available to them 24 seven. So they can get a lot of interesting information about suppliers, about competitors. Um, they can learn, for example, how much people in Anaheim spent on women's clothing in 2021. Um, we could uh, drill down and click on any of those blocks and you'll be able to get more information about what that looks like. So really useful information to many of your community stakeholders, especially the existing businesses in the area. And there's a lot of variables here. So you really can explore this with, um, with a, lot of, uh, a lot of detail. Uh, the business map over here is going to help us map out all of the businesses in the area. That's a lot of dots. There's a lot of businesses uh, in Anaheim. So you are going to be able to, to zoom in if you want to. Every one of those dots represents a specific business. Now I find it a little bit dizzying when there's a lot of businesses. So you could turn that off. We can then go in and explore specific businesses. So let's say I was really just interested in looking at all the attorney offices in Anaheim. By clicking this, I'm now able to see those uh, mapped out. And of course, we can zoom in more if we want to, you know, explore and see how they they fall across the area. I can actually go in and click on this, and it will actually list by name every one of the attorney offices that are in there. We get this data from Data Axel. We have a constant uh, data feed with them, so this is updated all of the time. Um, the data is best, obviously, for urban areas, but this is human qualified data, um, and they work hard to keep this updated, and we know that this is, uh, this is something that's very uh, dynamic and changeable, and so we wanted to be able to reflect that for you. Now, the last report that I'm going to show you over here is talent. So talent is going to show both the pro top programs and universities in an area, and you can flip back and forth between them. But one of the really cool things about this is, and of course, it's pulling from 50 miles around. In this case, we've selected Anaheim. Obviously, talent drives in, commutes in in different ways. So we want to pull from the region. And we can then explore degrees conferred. So any one of these can be opened up, and you could get information, for example, about about registered nurses, where they're coming from, the different degrees that are conferred in those areas and, and uh, where those institutions fall. Again, this is really interesting, a lot of interest in workforce data and where talent comes from. So it's kind of a nice way to, to be able to track that. Um, as I said in the one of the initial screens, you can expand the map at different times if you want to be able to see the map a little bit bigger. We've got different pinpoint tools. So depending where you are, I'm going to go back to demographics for a moment. If you want to drop a pin and do analysis, you can just pick it up from here and drop it on the map. There is a measurement tool, for example, um, that allows you to uh, to show those on uh, on if you want to look measure the distance between two points, of course. Um, we can change the radius over here. We have miles, you can go up to 60 miles, but we also have a great drive time analysis here. And you can do drive time by car, by truck, 
or on foot. You can adjust it by date, by time of day. So if you want to see on a Sunday, for example, versus a Wednesday, you want to check out on rush hour and you can adjust by um, uh, day uh, to this location or from this location. So it becomes uh, possible to, you know, offer more interest in, in how accessible things actually are. Um, a couple of things that you'll see at the top here is, let's start with map layers. I'm going to go back to our main report, okay, is that we have uh, map layers. I'm going to let uh, Jeff speak a little bit more about the local data, but you can explore all of these to see how these things fall across the state. Of course, you can zoom in at any time if you want to do that. Um, we can uh, go look at political districts and see how those fall across the state. Now, I've just got this kind of strange looking map at the moment of uh, both broadband coverage for fiber and congressional districts. Let's say that's something I want to share. This share uh, link right now will bring pet people back to that specific bit of analysis that I've chosen to show over here. Um, Jeff, maybe I'll turn this back over to you and you can speak uh, a little bit more and then we can take a look at compare communities when we uh, when I bring it back. How does that sound? Sure, absolutely. I'll make you the presenter. All right. Do you, I, I have two screens up. Do, do you see the application or am I on the wrong monitor? Nope. We see your monitor. Okay, there we go. Does that look better? It does. Okay, excellent. So you covered a lot of what I was, uh, you did an excellent job, Elisa, just mentioning some of the options for exporting those reports and everything. I know that was one thing I was gonna look at. Um, but one thing you know I can mention here is with the, the map layers. So there's a lot of data in here that GIS planning provides, but also the, uh, the GoBiz team did a great job of finding additional data sources that we brought in here. The, now they're kind of mixed in currently. So under local data, this is, something that definitely came from GoBiz, or at least um, they pointed me in the direction to get that. Um, so we have the ability to bring in really any type of map layer um, that's available. Um, so if there's anything that you think of that might be useful, I would definitely pass that over to the GoBiz team. And if they agree, that they would send that over to us and we could add that in there. Um, now, some things we provide, so like the broadband data, that's coming from uh, from us through the FCC. Um, we update that as soon as they release that data. Um, one way to tell if it's a layer that um, is something that GIS planning is providing is if you see that it's a, a national layer. Um, all those layers that we provide are national-based. Um, anything that's being provided just by the GoBiz team um, is something that was just covered uh, for California. So like under electric utility service area, again, these are all coming from the state and we're putting all these in here. Um, and we update these as frequently as needed. Um, energy data, most of these are all coming from us. This is just looking at different energy sources, you know, infrastructure, power plants, things of that nature. And a lot of these layers are very smart. So if I come in here and I, I click on this, and I wanna know what one of these dots represents. I can click on that and I can get capacity. I can see the name of the plant. Um, I can see the source of the data. So we, we're, we're very open with where all that data comes from. Um, and then environmental data, things like flood hazard, recycling market zones, wetlands. Again, these are all data points that we've incorporated in here. Now, one important thing to mention is just like you can export all the other um, reports, you can also export these maps that you build. So if I wanted to come in here and maybe I wanted to show something like, if I go to incentives and maybe I wanted to show, actually let's switch to a different one here. Let's go to political districts. Maybe I wanted to show the Senate districts here. I can go in here, I can export this and I just simply select image or I can get a link or I can do it to a PDF. So if I needed an image for a report, I could grab that. It'll load that in here as an image and then that image switch it over to the other, whoops, there we go. We'll bring that image up. So that's something that you can then include in a report as well. So not only do we have the data, but we also have the layers to go along with it. Um, one thing to piggyback on what Elisa mentioned. Um, oh, again, with the map layers, again, any feedback you have is welcome. Another good place to see information about the data that we provide is this help option here. This goes over to our knowledge base. So. You know, for example, if I wanted to look up map layers, you could turn that in GIS planning map layer sources. So for all the layers that we provide, where are we getting that data? What are we showing in there? And what is the source and when it was last updated? So 
definitely heavily lean on this knowledge base because it'll answer most of those questions if you need to go back to them. Um, and then let me go back to the site here. Uh, one other thing to mention with the looking at communities, we also have the ability to filter and find specific communities by either population, labor force, bachelor's degree level, or median household income. So maybe if I just wanted to plot out my smaller communities, maybe 5,000 to 50,000, I can put that in here and that'll filter through those different results. Oops, I gotta get the numbers right in there. Um, and that would show me that. So there's, there is the ability to go in here now and you can put in multiple parameters and get results for what you wanna see in there um, to be able to then build those reports on it. And just like Elisa mentioned, you know, for those export options, you're typically between the reports, you're gonna either be exporting to a PDF, um, you'll be exporting to an image for some of them, like right here in the infographic. And then almost all the reports with the exception of the infographic here have the uh, uh, added option of exporting to Excel so you can get the raw data. So again, we try and keep you covered there as far as all those data sources. Um, as far as the compare communities, Elisa, did you want to cover that? Yeah, sure. Maybe before I do, do you just want to show how people can save? Can they save reports? So they currently, we don't save the actual reports in here, but what you can do is save communities. So if you come in here and you want to select some of these communities, so I might want to come in here, I can create a folder. I'm going to just put this in Project Blue. So I can come in here and I can start to save some of my communities. Um, if I come in here, I can then come back to those communities and then I can jump right back into those reports. So for here, we're not actually saving the reports, but you have a shortcut to those communities that you want to go back to. You, the one thing you can do here is you could create for, of this summary sheet here, if you wanted to just create a summary list of those cities um, or export them to Excel, just that summary data, you could get that. Um, but currently, you know, there's no, we're not going to actually be dropping in demographic reports in here. And people can um, share a folder. So if they've, let's say, chosen in your area that there's three creek communities that you always want to come back to, you could share, let's say you created that project blue folder you could share those right or maybe i want to say smaller communities or something like that exactly oh, one just... more thing before i turn it back over to you um we can look at this data by city county we can look at data for the entire state um, but we also have these regions here and so if we look in here this is important regions are just aggregated areas that the gobiz team gave us so you can start to look at the bay area versus central coast versus inland empire and then you can drill down into any of these regions just like you could any of the other communities and pull up those same reports. Excellent. Okay. So I am going to, if you're done, Jeff, I will quickly just show the compare communities. Um, so I'll grab that over here. Uh, so one of the things that you'll see at the top is a care, com compare communities. Now you can, when you're, when you're searching compare communities, the first thing you have to search is obviously something within the geography of California. You can search city, county, region, or, uh, I believe, and then you yep. need to you can search with as many other communities of that type across the U.S. as you like. So in this case, I've just created, uh, four. I could add another one if I wanted to put them in here. Um, and once you've got them, you can see, so roughly I chose Sacramento. We have other counties that kind of roughly similar population. Then I can click comparison reports and that'll bring me over to this screen that allows me to at a glance um, compare on all kinds of different variables. So let's say I wanted to compare against education attainment. I can do that over here. I can then even scroll and hold each one of those next to Sacramento County so that I could see how they play out. And then I can even switch to establishments, to consumer expenditures, or to census data, which is one of the relatively new things that we've added. So if I wanna see the difference in expenditures, for example, on food, I can see right now what that looks like in the graph. And of course, I can see that in the, uh, in the table down here as well. And just like everything else, it is possible to you know, generate PDFs, you can share. At any point, you can edit the location. So if I want to add or remove from the over here, it's possible to do that. Um, and it's just a, a neat way of being able to stack data up side by side for analysis and then again for sharing. From a marketing perspective, there's so many amazing things you can do with the share button. 
if you are in charge of the LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, any of the social media channels, if you're putting together e-newsletters, you can create fantastic analysis for your region and then you can share them in all kinds of different ways. And the idea always being, of course, for potential investors and community stakeholders is if we grab the link, we can direct as much traffic as possible to the tool. On your website, you can also choose your community and you can create the link directly to your community. So if you are in Alameda and you want to have a link back to the GoBiz website, you can grab this link over here, explore data about Alameda, that will send people back to the GoBiz website and they will be researching information about your community. Um, let's see if there's any questions. Of course, Michael and Mark, if there's anything at any point that you would like to add here, feel free to jump in. Um, we do have one question here about errors in the business data. Um, how does one go about correcting errors in the business data? One example is listing two bowling alleys in Dublin, California, when there's only one. The second one listed is actually a restaurant. Jeff, I'll let you uh, answer this. Oh, Jeff, you may have muted yourself. Sorry about that. Um, yes. Excellent question. Um, it does come up, um, you know, the data is never going to be perfect. However, we do have a relationship with Data Axel um, where we can report any of these errors. Now, the idea isn't that you're, you shouldn't have to be cleaning these things up and hopefully you'll find, you know, only a few of these. However, if you do see something, feel free to email support at gisplanning.com or just email the GoBiz team. And just give like the, that example, we can go in and just like Elisa mentioned, we have a constant, you know, two direction um, API with data axle. So we can report that um, and it sh once they verify it, which usually takes a couple days, it'll then be pushed back down to us. Um, so absolutely. Now, obviously, if it's something that just closed like last week, um, you may not want to feel like you need to report those things. But if it's something that's significant, that's been been there a while and not in there or that's there and shouldn't be there anymore, absolutely feel free to, um, to provide that information to us. Excellent. I don't see any other questions coming up here on the screen. Uh, Michael and Mark, if you have anything that you would like to add. Um, yeah, thank you everyone for attending. I am going to put my email and I'll have Mark put his email in the chat. So feel free to email or reach out to us if you have any suggestions of layers you wanna see, any data that you'd like to see added, um, or just general questions at all. We're happy to send them and work with GIS planning. Excellent, so I've actually put the emails up on the screen. If you have any questions from the GoBiz and, and you have Michael and Mark's uh, email addresses on there. Uh, for client services, Jeff, uh, I work individually with all of our clients to help them get maximum value out of the tools from a marketing perspective. Uh, we have tons of resources on our website under the learn section all kinds of webinars and blog posts and tip sheets on making the most of these things. But of course, if you have any questions, please let us know. It is absolutely our pleasure to be working with all of you. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy days to join us. We appreciate the work you're doing for your communities. And it's just been an absolute pleasure to work with you, Michael and Mark. Um, and we look, we look forward to seeing where, where we can take this. So with that, I am going to thank you all for your time. Um, please feel free to reach out with any questions. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you.